This episode is made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently, offering comprehensive supports for students with ADHD and other learning differences, both on campus and online. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Well, Schmaman then said there can be something called that he called dysmetria of thought and dysmetria of emotion. And this is where ADD comes into play, because all of us with ADD have the common experience of having a thought not end up where we wanted it to. We have a thought, and the next thing you know, we're, we're thinking about how to fry an egg, and the next thing you know, we're talking about how to change a tire on an automobile. That's past pointing with a thought. A thought goes out heading in one trajectory, and then it ends up in an, in an entirely different place. This is Dr. Ned Hallowell, and welcome to another episode of Distraction. Today, I am lucky again to have my dear friend and brilliant mentor and all-around wonderful human being, Dr. John Rady, professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School, uh, 2016, named the Outstanding Psychiatrist of the Year for Advancing the Field by the Massachusetts Psychiatric Society, an internationally recognized expert on many topics in in psychiatry and the brain, not to mention life. Uh, He's uh, truly a a master of the field and and, um, always curious and trying to branch out and discover new ideas, new projects, new ways of understanding the amazing apparatus, most amazing phenomenon all of nature called the brain. Well, so welcome, John. I know we've had you on recently, and we're thrilled to have you back again. Let me uh, say today, we thought we'd open up an entirely new area for most people, uh, which is the cerebellum. And, And just to give you some background, the cerebellum is a clump of neurons at the base and back of the brain. Uh, that literally has been thought of as an afterthought uh, uh, throughout uh, psychiatry and and medicine, for that matter. It's a small clump of neurons, but uh, it it occupies only 10% of brain volume. But most people, including most doctors, don't realize it has 75% of the neurons of the brain. 75% of the neurons are packed into this this, uh, clump um, at the back of the brain. Uh, called the cerebellum. And and when I was in medical school and you were, John, we were taught it it regulated balance and coordination. And that was about it. Well, the picture has changed. And it's a whole new ballgame when it comes to the cerebellum. Thanks largely to one man at Harvard Medical School. So let me let you, John, tell us about what we've learned about the cerebellum in the past 20 years and why it is so tremendously important now in, in matters related to cognition, affect, attention, uh, impulse control, and uh, general life balance. Right, right. No, thank you for having me back again. I, I enjoyed the first time, and I'm looking forward to this. So, <clears throat> uh, yes, we've learned a tremendous amount about that little part of the brain, the beautiful brain, uh, or the pretty brain, which is cerebellum. Uh, you know, because it, it, it was when we were in medical school, yes, it was all about balance, coordination, uh, getting ourselves to, to have seamless movement. Now, when what we know about the cerebellum is that it, it, with all those nerve cells, they're always working. Even when we're sleeping, even when we're not doing anything, they're constantly adjusting, readjusting our, the balance of, and the coordination of the body, but also of higher brain functions. And that's what's, that's where attention comes in. But that's where all kinds of brain functions, like wording, like, like memory, like our emotional life, like social involvement, and certainly like attention. What we know is that cerebellum is constantly adjusting and keeping our experience seamless. So instead of being jerky and disjointed, It's seamless, and that's the big push that the cerebellum brings to our brain and to our brain functions. Now, we, yes, so uh, Dr. Schmaman, 
I'm not. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce his name. Let me let me let me just spell it for you because it, it's a, a name you ought to know if you're interested at all in this topic. Jeremy Schmaman, S C H M A H M A N N S C H M A H M A N N Jeremy Schmaman, and he's really the guy who, uh, with his uh, brain scan studies. Uh, has put the cerebellum on the map. There's even a syndrome, Schmaman syndrome, that results from cerebellar injury, uh, which symptomatically closely resembles ADHD. In any case, so tell us what, what Schmaman and others have, have shown. Well, what, what he showed and, and others uh, early, you know, in, in the 90s, that uh, if the cerebellum is out of whack, if it's not functioning properly, you will have motor problems. And we've known this, uh, you know, the cerebellum is responsible, for instance, for helping us pass or fail the sobriety test to be able to walk tandemly or to finger to nose kind of tests that so they might We've do. always known that. So what's, what's the new stuff? So the new stuff is that it, 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 he talked about that as dysmetria, dysmetria. And then he's put that in and said, we have dysmetria of thought as well of uh, of thinking and especially of our attention system uh the attention system needs this kind of contribution from the cerebellum to achieve its wonderful balance and seamless working and if we don't have it many people in the past have talked about their symptoms of add that it that oftentimes their brain are a little disjointed. Their, their experience is disjointed. And, so let, let's uh, just, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but let's just pause over that because it's a very sophisticated concept. The, d- dysmetria means what John was just talking about, when you, you touch your finger to your nose and then you touch your finger to the doctor's finger and back and forth. If you can't do that, that's called dysmetria. It's past pointing. You you point past the doctor's finger or you miss your nose when you point it to yourself. Well, Schmaman then said there can be something called that he called dysmetria of thought and dysmetria of emotion. And this is where ADD comes into play because all of us with ADD have the common experience of having a thought not end up where we wanted it to. We have a thought, and the next thing you know, we're, we're thinking about how to fry an egg, and the next thing you know, we're talking about how to change a tire on an automobile. That's past pointing with a thought. A thought goes out, heading in one tra- trajectory, and then it ends up in an, in an entirely different place. Or with emotion, we've had a uh, we've we've we start to feel an emotion that we we think is gentle and tender and loving, and we end up uh, getting angry at somebody. So again, it's the the dysmetria, the past pointing, if you will, both of thought and emotion. And and Schmaman said, yes, this is cerebellar mediated. It's not it's not a problem with cognition or affect in and of itself. It's related to problems in the cerebellum. Did I get that right, John? No, you sure did. And and it is true that that yes. And so he, amongst others, be, began to say, hey. The cerebellum is involved even in mood regulation, even yeah. in. And so you see cerebellar differences in people who get depressed. Uh, we early on in the 1990, we began to look at the cerebellum as, a, as something that was off in autism. Mm-hmm. You know, the social connection was off. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the same thing can happen with ADD, you know, the. Not having that balance can throw off your relationships with others, and this mm-hmm. is what why we we've chosen to focus on it because it's 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 really very important. And what we see in in a lot of kids is that they have discoordination syndrome. They are not very balanced and coordinated, and uh, that plays a part in their attention problems. And so what we've done is begin to treat the cerebellum with exercise, with cerebellar training that helps to regulate the cerebellum. And and by the way, it then helps regulate the attention system. Yeah, this is this is also big news and really new. And and w- when I first learned about it twenty years ago, I couldn't believe it. But 
It is, isn't it amazing that by doing certain physical exercises that stimulate the cerebellum, you can get marked improvement in the symptoms of ADHD, um, of dyslexia, uh, as well as mood uh, issues and, and cognitive problems, memory issues. So by bulking up, you know, like John says, the brain is a muscle, by bulking up the cerebellum, by challenging it with exercises that, that require you to balance and that become progressively difficult. So this is very specific exercise. It's not just doing any old exercise, although every exercise usually includes some measure of balance. But these are specifically designed like standing on one leg or standing on one leg with your eyes closed or standing on one leg with your eyes closed while doing arithmetic uh, calculations. You know, so you're, you're further challenging the brain. You get Definite improvement. And the fellow that I've been working with for years who's really perfected this, Winford Dorr over in England, has a specific program that if you do for 10 minutes twice a day for three to six months, in his experience, he gets 80% who have marked significant improvement. And, and you know, again, you can't just uh, randomly do balancing exercises. You, you need to have them... He does a diagnostic assessment, then you need to have them uh, gradually increased in difficulty, and he they'll track you. It's all done on computer, uh, but they'll track you and, and increase the difficulty. Essentially, they become your cerebellar trainer. Um, but if you do the exercises faithfully, and that's the big, you know, like all these things that involve exercise, you have to do it and do it faithfully. You do get improvement. And it, would you say, John, the, the, you're, you're bulking up the cerebellum? Is that too crude a way to put it? Oh, yeah. No, you're, what you do is acutely you turn it on, but chronically, that is over time, you're going to build up resources inside your brain. You're going to change your brain, grow more connections, one, to, you know, one cell to another that will help you uh, overcome deficits or differences or strengthen uh, activities that you want to be good at and, and or to have it work work better for you. So it, it uh, yes, I mean, one, just as an aside, we, I just, we completed a study with uh, 32 very autistic hospitalized patients of, uh, and, and, uh, and autistic kids always, I mean, they always have a hard time with balance and coordination. But by just training their balance, the biggest factor, the biggest effect was an improvement in their attention system. They were able to attend, they were able to be more social, et cetera. But the attention got better. And, and we see this again and again. For, and that's why something like yoga or something like and any balance demanding activity will stimulate your cerebellum and over time will change it. And this has an effect on the attention system. But it, but if you want to get a really intense effect, I think you do need to don't just say, oh, any old thing. And indeed, you're skiing, skateboarding, uh, uh, all of those things that challenge balance are really good for your cerebellum. But I think the the program that Dor has developed uh, is is I don't know of any. Well, brain balance is another one, but they're they're um, you have to go to them, and it's very time consuming. With door, you do it at home. Let me just give you a website if you if you want to learn more about this program. It, go to distraction. The word distraction. Dot zing performance z as in zebra zingperformance dot com. So that's distraction dot zingperformance.com and uh, you'll see an interview on there with me and and the Winford Door and and you'll learn about about his program it's in my opinion the the single best non-medication treatment that we've got for ADHD and as John is pointing out it helps a lot more than just that the cerebellum you could sort of think of as the core of your brain you know like if you strengthen your core physically you will help your whole body well if you strengthen your cerebellum, you, you'll help your whole brain in ways that you, you just were not aware of. And who would have thought that challenging balance will improve your SAT scores or your attention or your, or your mood? And yet it's the yep. case. Yep. No, and, one, and, and just as you mentioned that, the core, actually the core training of all sorts, 
affects the cerebellum. So absolutely, it is a big the, the, part of that as well. balancing exactly balancing itself is is depends upon core. Yes. You know, so you you know you've got you've got the two working in tandem, and the visual cortex plays a very important role because when you when you close your eyes, it's a whole lot harder to maintain your balance. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is, and we learned that with our friend uh, Simon. Simon, our uh, Russian uh, trainer. Uh, to, I called him my torturer and spark, yes. but, uh, because he'd always come up with more harder things to do, and yes. when. We, we got on the, the BOSU ball, which is uh, an unbalanced kind of thing, and uh, could stand there for 10 seconds. But then he said, okay, on one leg, and we could do that eventually. Yeah. And, he, and then when he said, okay, close your eyes, we right. fell off. I mean, you know. It, you know he could he always push us. That we couldn't what, do it. You know, exactly. Right? He would, he, he, we wouldn't rest until we failed. It was, uh, yeah. you know, I I'll tell you a funny story about him. I wrote about him in one of my books, and I said he was uh, built like a brick outhouse, uh, using the polite term. And uh, and he, he was reading the book, and he he didn't recognize the term, so he showed it to his wife, and, and he said, what does this mean? And she said, Simon, he's saying you look like a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Which he did anything but. He, he, he looks like a fire plug. I mean, the guy was just a massive, massive bundle of muscle and and, uh, and yeah. a sweetheart, a really sweet man, Simon Zaltzman. What a wonder. He, I had to stop with him because he moved to Florida. But, um, but uh, yeah. John and I, we both... Uh, we both came under his spell. Well, this yes. is great. Uh, um, isn't it fun to be living in an era where we're discovering new stuff? I mean, you know, with exercise in general, the cerebellum in particular, uh, you know, in, in upcoming sessions, we'll talk about another new discovery that John and I are enthusiastic about, the the default mode network, and, and we'll have to do another session on that, so... I think we've exhausted the attention span of our audience, and I think we should we should say goodbye. But, gosh, John, it's so wonderful to have you, and and uh, how much you have advanced this field, and and uh, you know by by taking us uh, outside the box and and uh, finding ways that that all kinds of uh, uh, unconventional interventions can meet with tremendous success. Well, that's going to be it for today. For more information about John and his wonderful world of, of ideas and, and concepts and work, go to johnrady.com. That's J-O-H-N-R-A-T-E-Y.com. J-O-H-N-R-A-T-E-Y.com. Distraction is created by Sounds Great Media. Our recording engineer and editor is the always dependable Scott Person. And our producer is the equally dependable, brilliant, and resourceful, Sarah Gurton. This is Dr. Ned Hallowell wishing you all the best of luck. Goodbye for now. The episode you just heard was made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently, offering comprehensive supports for students with ADHD and other learning differences, both on campus and online. Learn more at lcdistraction.org.